Hello again everyone and welcome to another weird episode of Classic Doom Shenanigans. Today I'd like to talk about several lesser known, more obscure features of Doom maps. This may sound surprising because Doom has been around for 30 years already, so there shouldn't really be any mysteries left in it. Still, there are some you know little details in some of the maps which are known to some people but generally not known to the majority of players and some of them are quite surprised when they learn about them so let's jump straight into the game and check some of these things out we'll start with doom 1 because it comes before 2 obviously <laughs> So where are we going first? Ooh, E1M8, an old favorite. A map that we've visited quite a few times in this series. I've saved the game at a point where the map is pretty much done. The two barons are dead, the way is clear. So all Doom guy needs to do at this point is to accept his fate and go into the unknown. However, there is one little feature that many people don't know about. And yeah, you're probably thinking, but it's such a small map, it's so simple. How could you hide something in it? Well, apparently you can. In here is a hidden button. And yeah, I know a lot of people don't know it's here. And what it does is that it allows you to activate this elevator and come down here back to the beginning of the level which is kind of pointless at this point in time but sure why not and since the walls are down the elevator now goes all the way down to the floor of the big yard and you can use this switch as many times as you wish here's a look from here I don't know if you noticed it, but the side texture of the elevator was unpacked for some reason. And I should mention that this little hidden switch here didn't exist originally. It was put into the map in the 666 update. Before that, the only way you could go down was by performing a tricky jump from up here which I couldn't do right now, but yeah, that was the only way. So, what else do, do we have here? E2M4. Crusher? Yes, this is a crusher and everybody knows about this crusher. I mean, you walk under it and it starts crushing because that's what crushers do. However, something you might not know and that's something I only found out last year and by accident you know I was watching one of Decino's videos and he accidentally shot this wall here the one I'm facing and something happened something I had no idea about even though I had played Doom for about 30 years are you ready to see it? Yeah, shooting the wall causes the floor to rise and shut off the crusher altogether. And I never had the slightest idea this could happen. Yeah, I was pretty mind blown when I saw it for the first time. And as far as I know, there's no way to bring the floor back down. So now the crusher is permanently blocked off. Yeah, let me show you again. You basically need to aim for this wall here and shoot it. And that's what happens. Yeah, pretty amazing. I wonder what the idea behind this was. Was it deliberate? Was it some kind of oversight? Perhaps we should ask Sandy. <laughs> E2M2. What can I say about that? You're pretty familiar with this situation here. Uh, yeah, it's about the middle of the level. We have two blue key doors here. This one and this one. We have a small window up here. 
and I've cleaned up the area in advance so that we don't lose time. I'll go all the way back to the blue key. So we go past the crushers. Oop. Uh, we get the blue key. And then we go down to collect the red key. Nothing unusual so far. But have you ever wondered why this area is designed the way it is, you know, with this small window here which seems to serve no purpose. And then these stairs and then you go through this door and the other one to get the red key. It seems a little unusual, you know, almost like the original intent was different. But before we go back in time to check this, just a quick reminder about this, you know, this little step here that allows you to look into the other room and shoot into it. And on the other side is a similar step that also allows you to look through this window. So, to learn something more about this little mystery, we're going to take a look at Doom 1.1 which was released on December 16th, just six days after Doom's original birthday in 1993. And it was the first release to have all three episodes. So it was the first full release of the game when it truly really became a trilogy <laughs> as its help screen describes it. So we go to this version of the game. And here we are, back in E2M2. By the way, notice that in 1.1, Nightmare difficulty is still missing. Anyway, here we are again, and this time something is different about this door. No, it's not a blue key door anymore, only this one is a blue key door. Hmm, weird, isn't it? And I can see something through this window. There's something on the wall. Gee, I wonder what it is. So we go all the way back to the blue key again. Ah. <laughs> oh, how lovely. The crusher got bugged. Yeah, that's something that uh, happens sometimes in older versions of Doom, especially after saving and loading. Sometimes elevators, moving platforms and crushers can get bugged. Something we can easily fix with a bit of no clip. <sighs> anyway, the other crushers are obviously working fine. <sighs> that was fun. So we go back here, collect the blue key again. But this time there is a switch here. And that's why we have a small window in this wall. So you can see how the door opens when you press the switch. So now you go down here, open this and finally collect your head key. So yeah, that's how E2M2 was originally. You open this door with a switch. Ooh, I made somebody angry. However, some players quickly found out that it's possible to press the switch uh, through the window due to the quirks of the Doom engine. And that's probably why it Software decided to remove the switch and turn this into a blue key door. But of course the general configuration of the level and the small window remained. Oh, what about that little step I showed you earlier? Let's go back there. Huh, it's missing now. Well, actually it wasn't implemented yet. They decided to put it in the next version 1.2. And if we go to the other side, the opposite step is also missing at this time. So it's a window you can't shoot through. Unlike later versions when you actually can. And I guess that was the idea. In a multiplayer game, you could shoot at other players who are in this room. And I think that concludes our... Wait. Actually, 
there is something I already showed in my very first video, the one about uh, Jesus, you guys, the one about Doom's 30th anniversary. But I know some of you haven't watched it, so I'll very quickly show it here, just for you. In this very old version of the game, if you no clip outside into this yard, you find this mysterious team pack just sitting here. <laughs> I don't know why it's here, what its purpose was, but it's just here, until it was removed in the next update. Well, I think that's all I could say for Doom 1 for now. And now we can go and take a look at Doom 2. Doom's sequel has its own little secrets, which I'm going to show you now. We'll generally be using version 1.9, which is the latest one. And the first thing we'll visit is map 3. Hmm, what's in map 3? Oh yes, this little non-secret which contains a backpack. Inside, in fact, it's the first backpack you can find in the game. And over here is a teleporter which leads back to that same room. But of course, Everybody knows about this, although some older fans tend to sometimes forget about this little room. And do you know why? I'll tell you why. Because originally it wasn't here. Yeah, this little room with the backpack is a late addition. It was only placed inside this map in the very final patch, 1.9. So if we go back... To the previous version which is 1.8 something I actually made a video about a while ago and we go back to map 3 and put on some IDDT and you will notice that the secret teleporter here and this little room with the backpack are missing they simply did not exist at the time and that's why we old veterans sometimes tend to forget about it. Now let's go back to 1.9 and see what else we can talk about. Ooh, map 7. What's in map 7? Ah yes, there's a hidden room here. Let me show you. And I know most people know about it, but there definitely are some that still don't, even after all these years, especially among the younger generation, I suppose. So this room is inaccessible in normal single player. No way to open it in any way, not even by shooting it. It's designed for deathmatch, actually. You can spawn inside this room and then just open this door and make it accessible. And there is a BFG in here, plus some ammo for it. And also a second exit switch. By the way, I don't know if you can see it, but... This little room is slightly below the level of the other area. See? It's like a step. And the lower texture is missing, but it's so small that it's barely noticeable. It's just a tiny, tiny defect. <coughs> Map 19. The teleporter room. I decided to include it in the video because I know some people are confused by it even to this present day. They say, well, how can I remember all the destinations of all the teleporters? Well, here's the thing, you don't actually need to remember anything. You see the shape they're arranged in corresponds to the citadel itself. So this teleporter, the northwestern one, will take you to the northwestern tower. The northeastern one will take you to the northeastern tower. And of course the southeastern one will take you here to the southeastern tower. As for the center of the city, there we go there by taking the central teleporter. So you see, no need to memorize anything, just look at the map and determine where you need to go, then take the appropriate teleporter. Something interesting about this room 
is that one of these teleporters is actually bugged when playing on a lower difficulty level. By lower difficulty I mean I'm too young to die or hey, not too rough. So if we go back to map 19 and put on some no clip. Uh, okay, a quick explanation. You see, teleport destinations are actually objects that are placed in a map. And like all other objects, they have tags for difficulty. Which means you can make it appear on some difficulties, but not others. And the teleport destination for this particular one, for some reason, is missing the tags for the lowest difficulties. And as a result, the teleporter doesn't work. Its destination simply hasn't appeared in the map. It's not supposed to appear on this difficult level. And I don't know if this was deliberate or a mapping error. It's more likely an error. But the result is that the teleporter doesn't work. Whereas all the others do work. Like this one. Which takes to the south is tower. And in closing... I'll just quickly visit map 25, Blood Falls. A peculiar thing about this map is this really unusual secret here which contains nothing. It's empty, <laughs> there's literally nothing in it. Have you ever wondered why? I know the majority of you probably know the reason why this secret is empty and for those who don't you see, it's only empty on the higher difficulty levels, like Ultra Violence, but if you load this map in a lower difficulty, this little secret will contain a BFG! Oh, how nice! But you can only enjoy it if you play in a lower difficulty. And, of course, for most experienced players, that's not really acceptable, so... Sorry, no BFG for you. Anyway, I think that's enough for today. What can I say in closing? Well, after all these years, Doom continues to amaze us and surprise us. Particularly the E2M4 Crusher thing really blew my mind when I found out about it. I mean, it was there all these years and I never even suspected. Oh, and in case anyone is wondering, that silly meme you saw at the beginning, I made it with MS Paint. Ooh, how weird am I? <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time, whenever that may be, and goodbye.